Here we're looking at part nine, and this will be the final part of uh, muscle tissue metabolism. And we're looking at fiber types right here. So we have the structural and functional characteristics of three types of skeletal muscle fibers. So um, there's variations on a theme, and uh, everyone has a slightly different arrangement um, in terms of this. Muscles in general, though, are con in considered easily categorized. Um, so um, all, everyone's uh, eye, ec uh, extraocular eye muscles move fast, really fast. Um, and so, and also our soleus muscles of the legs for walking move slowly. Okay, so um, generally speaking, there's those commonalities, but then some people will be blessed with a little bit more of a certain type of fiber and other people will be blessed with uh, other types of fiber. So we uh, we have differences then. And here again, you can get the screenshot if you need it for this whole table. Okay, so three different types. We have the slow oxidative fiber, and uh, this is the one of great endurance. Um, it goes slowly. It's oxidative, which means that it's aerobic and it's using uh, the aerobic means of ATP, so of course lots of mitochondria. Then we have the fast oxidative, again using mitochondria for um, the type of Krebs cycle uh, aerobic uh, type of um, uh, glycolysis and use of um, the mitochondrion. Okay, and so it's going to be fast, uh, but uh, it's going to also use aerobic means. And then over here we have the uh, fast glycolytic fiber, which is pretty much just an anaerobic specialist. Uh, it will have to rest at some point and use uh, aerobic activities in order to recover. But its main project and mission um, is to be fast and strong. Okay, so now we can compare the, uh, the various uh, parts of the muscle. So in terms of speed, we have slow, fast, fast. In terms of uh, myosin, ATP, ACE activity, the speed of the enzyme. The enzyme is going to move slowly here. Uh, we have a fast twitch. So that's the movement of the head. The myosin head is going to be fast. And here again, the myosin head is going to move quickly, fast. Okay, then... Um, the next detail here is that the uh, primary pathway for ATP synthesis is going to be aerobic. So here we have a pure aerobic system. Okay, so um, in this particular uh, situation we have uh, intrinsic muscles of the back, we have the soleus of the leg. Any muscle that's used for, um, how shall I say, uh, endurance activity or posture. So your postural muscles will have to be aerobic, okay? Otherwise, they're cramping. Um, then we have fast aerobic, so the um, uh, gastric nemius for running. Uh, so you can use it for sprinting, but you can also use it for uh, distance running and even walking. And then um, there's going to be some amount of uh, fast twitch glycolytic fiber in the gastric nemius of those athletes that are especially attuned to speed uh, or to strength. Okay, so as we go down the list here, it's important to note all of these things. Myoglobin, what the heck is myoglobin? Myoglobin is basically hemoglobin as a single molecule, and it's um, carrying oxygen within the muscle cell. So myoglobin is the hemoglobin, so to speak, of muscle, except that it's not a four-part molecule like hemoglobin. It's a one-part molecule. It's also highly conserved across species. So the myoglobin of the human is exactly the same sequence as the myoglobin of a whale, for instance. Okay, so lots of myoglobin if you're going to be uh, aerobic because it's the what's carrying the oxygen. Again, if you're going to be aerobic, got to have a lot of myoglobin. Over here, not so much. A little bit. Low, not absent, but low. Then we have the uh, glycogen. How, how well do we store glycogen? Here um, we have a little bit of glycogen, although we could have more. 
uh, depending on the activity, the level of activity. So initially though, it's a low storage uh, situation. Here we have intermediate, and I would also say uh, flexible. So if you're, um, if you're a 10,000 meter person, you're gonna have probably a little less. If you're a specialist in marathons or ultra marathons, you're gonna have way more. Okay, so this is quite variable. And then this is the high end over here where this type of fiber actually relies completely on, um, on glucose metabolism. So it's gotta have a lot of glycogen. Okay, then a recruitment order. Uh, this is the first to work. Is the um, it's probably not your thought immediately, but as you begin, as I begin to pile books in your hand, the first things you're going to be using are the uh, slow twitch. So we just one book, slow twitch. Uh, not a lot of strength involved. As I begin to add more books onto the stack that you're holding, we're moving on now to the. Uh, mid-range guy here. This is the fast uh, oxidative twitch fiber. And then finally, I've loaded on a whole bunch of books and you can barely hold it. And now you're relying on these fast twitch. And in fact, uh, you're starting to shake a little bit because um, you're starting to go into a state of fatigue. These actually fatigue quickly, as is noted here, rate of fatigue. Here we have slow uh, rate of fatigue, so it's fatigue resistant. This is what we're going to be using uh, when we're doing endurance type activities. So running a marathon will employ a lot of that. Over here we're going to be sprinting, walking, somewhere in the intermediate range of activity, intermediate fatigue resistant. Here once we get to start to use these muscles we're, go uh, we're gonna finish pretty quick. Okay, so the end of the road comes soon. Um, and that's uh, so they do have these differentials here marathon, uh, mid range running or walking, and then uh, here is the sprint situation. Okay, that we also have color, fiber, diameter, mitochondria, capillaries. As you might imagine, if you have a lot of capillaries, and there's a lot here, you're going to have a very red uh, muscle fiber. If the diameter is small, the mitochondria are many. Okay, here we have the intermediate range, red to pink, uh, intermediate in terms of size, lots of capillaries and lots of mitochondria because it's still aerobic. Here, not so many capillaries and mitochondria, very large hypertrophied size and white in color, so not a red um, fiber. Okay, and then um, the order of recruitment uh, was also mentioned in the past. So here we have um, the light load is loading here. We can handle this much for this amount of time. And then we have the intermediate load here. We're using the not quite as slow twitch endurance uh, related. Here we have the least amount of endurance, fast uh, fatigue situation. So once we load that level up, it's not gonna last very long. Um, and then we're going to press on to uh, the nature of smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is our digestive system, very long. We, uh, we actually send food more than 20 feet through various tubings, right? So if you're only 5 feet tall but you have 20 feet worth of intestines, that's something to seriously consider. Okay, um, and we have this relationship here with the, uh, the individual muscle cells. Here, these are sort of spindle-like little muscles. They're uh, represented here. Uh, when they contract, they actually have an external skeleton. Um, the, sort of a, the Z-line equivalent, as it were, is being sort of like bunched. So these kind of bunch. Uh, they're not quite as orderly as the skeletal muscle or even the heart muscle. These are more uh, sort of Rube Goldberg kind of, uh, you know, bunching things together this way. Uh, but nevertheless, they can be they can be closely packed together and create an entire, how shall I say, wall of muscle. So in your uterus, um, there's this type of smooth muscle, also in the intestines and the stomach and that sort of thing. So we're not going to get more into it than that. Um, and we'll just conclude right here in terms of 
uh, muscle anatomy and metabolism.